Big win for the men's Canadians national team over Curacao. Honduras coming up. What's at stake? We're going to talk about it for sure. Lionel Messi coming to the MLS? Maybe. If so, which team? Interesting development going on over there. And in the East, who is in dead last? Yeah, you guessed it. And a former CF Montreal player doing what he does best, scoring goals. That and much more. I'm Marinero, the sick podcast, CF Montreal talk. Jeremy Falosa joining me. Coming up. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. CF Montreal Talk. Here's the chance. Here's the chance. They got the goal. Absolutely incredible. Cameron Porter delivers the goal. The San Montreal Impact into the CONCACAF Champions League semi-final. The sickest CF Montreal podcast. It's going to be sick. Marinero, you can follow us on YouTube, the Sick Podcast, CF Montreal Talk, and on Twitter at Sick Pod, CFMTL. I bring in collaborator extraordinaire, Jeremy Falosa. What's going on? What's up, my friend? You doing all right? Uh Uh-huh. Better than this, you can't get, my friend. (laughs) Very good, very good. It's always fun talking about uh, soccer and talking about the Canadians men's national team, and it's especially fun always talking about CF Montreal. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I think the podcast is more fun than the games, to tell you the truth. But anyway, that's another story for another day. <laughs> you know why? The last game was fun because because uh, we mean you know we mean well and uh, we're we're dedicated and we're passionate, so we always give a hundred percent. The last go. game was very entertaining. Here's hoping that uh, every game between now and the end of the season yeah. will be as entertaining as last game was. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Okay. Uh, big win by the Canadians men's national team over Curacao, of course, which we expected. And um, a 2 nothing win. And now Honduras coming up, which is going to go later tonight. At the time of this recording, yeah. by the way, it's, uh, it's a give or take around uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday. And they play Honduras at around 7 p.m. tonight. So go yeah. ahead. Talk to me about the win versus Curacao and what's at stake here. Well, first of all, listen, it wasn't a great game against Curacao. Let's say the truth. I mean, uh, they want to zip. Uh, but at the same time, you know, Curacao went down a man early in this game. So there was a big advantage for Canada. I mean, you, you can't really see Canada dropping a game against Curaçao when you're up by a man in the first half, right? So I think that helped them out a lot, but cohesion was not there. We got to say also that the, the field didn't seem like it was in very good condition. Uh, the players hadn't played together since uh, the fall, since the World Cup. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, it was a first game back for everybody. You won 2-0. You picked up the three points. So now you find yourself in a, in a situation where you're tied with Honduras for first place in your group. What does that mean? Uh, that means that, first of all, they've qualified for the Gold Cup. That's for sure. So they'll play in the Gold Cup, although that was a formality. We know that. Now, what's at stake tonight against Honduras? They have the tiebreaker against Honduras because of goal, goal differential. So whether they win or tie tonight, they will go through to the semifinals of the Nations League, which will be played in June. But if they win tonight, they will either face Panama or Costa Rica in the semifinals. If they tie tonight, they will play USA in the semifinals, which will make it a lot more complicated. Now, it's important to understand that Canada needs to go as far as possible and finish as high as possible in this year's Nation League so that they have maximum chances next year to qualify for the Copa America. In order to qualify for the Copa America, they need to make the semifinals of the Nations League next year. But the path to the semifinals next year will be a lot easier if they do well in this year's Nation League. So tonight's game is important. If Canada loses, they are out. They are out of the Nations League. They will not play in June, but they will be there for the Gold Cup. So it is a big game tonight against Honduras, yeah. against Romel Kyoto. Uh, good news is they will get Alistair Johnston back. John Herdman will also be back. He was suspended. So um, it is a big game in Toronto tonight. Yeah, they have, you know, two of, you know, arguably the best players in CONCACAF if they're not the best players. And I think that's going to be enough to propel them over an opponent like Honduras. Anyway, we'll wait and see. We'll see how it pans out. An interesting article out. We got news. uh, Look, Lionel Messi, it looked like at one point he was going to extend with Paris Saint-Germain, then maybe not. There's talk of going back to FC Barcelona and ending his career where it started. That might happen. 
But we know that the MLS has been linked to Messi on a couple of occasions, notably Inter Miami. If he would come, this would be the biggest thing that would ever happen to this league, right? Because prior to him, or, or you know, the, the biggest player to ever come over in terms of the splash that it made was David Beckham. Yes. We know how important it was for the league to bring in David Beckham when they did bring him in. We know how important it would be for the league now, especially knowing that the United States, Canada, Mexico, they're going to co-host the 2026 World Cup. If you can have Lionel Messi playing in your league while all this is going on, it's huge. So teams might have to chip in. Yeah, so this is the, the thing. is The article that came out this week, we have to take it with a grain of salt because obviously the reporter was not aware of everything and how things work because he was saying that one team cannot hire Lionel Messi because of salary cap. That's not true. As we all know, if you sign him as a DP, you can give him $50 million if you want. Nobody can stop you. So when I read that, you know, I say to myself, how much information about the MLS does this reporter actually have? But what we can say is that you know, players get paid by the league. This is something people don't understand. But in the MLS, you don't get paid by your team. You get paid by the league. So I remember when this deal with Apple TV was announced by the MLS, there was talk of Lionel Messi in that press conference. I can tell you one thing. Apple TV has massive interest in trying to help MLS bring Lionel Messi to uh, this league so that they can boost and increase subscriptions to Apple TV, have more people sign up to MLS Pass. That's the objective here. And I know Apple TV is behind this. I know they're working, you know, um, in the, um, uh, you know, in the background to try and help MLS make this happen. Will it happen? I don't know. But according to this article, the teams would chip in. So basically the league would chip in to have Messi come and have him pick the team of his choice to come yeah. and play here in MLS. Um, and I guarantee you it's not going to be Montreal. <laughs> I don't know if they can afford you. Imagine Messi. Listen, here's the uh, the bargaining chip for yeah. David Beckham. You remember what it was, right? Yes. The bargaining chip for David Beckham was come over yes. and we're going to end up giving you an MLS team uh, no matter when you want it, probably at some point, whenever you want it. Maybe they gave a deadline. I don't remember what it was. But I think it was something to the point, you're going to get it for $25 million, regardless of what the value of the team was, right? Right, right. So he ended up, you know, was able to bring a team to Miami, right? And of course, he played with the Galaxy and the MLS, but he was able, he wanted to put a team in Miami. Okay, you know what? Miami is the place where I want to bring it. No problem. Bring a team to Miami. We'll give it to you for $25 million. At the time, I think the expansion fees were like in the mid 200s, maybe even 300. I'm not sure. Well, oh, when he got the team or when he was promised this. So, so the value of the teams when the when the team came into MLS, the value of the teams at that point was at least 250 million dollars, but he got his team for 25 million. Yeah, exactly. Right? Because he and had I that could, promise. I could be wrong exactly. by the 250, it could be 200 yeah. or whatever it was, but it was in the hundreds of millions of dollars. He yes. got the team for 25 million dollars. And, of course, he also came over thinking he's going to brand his brand in North America, which was a market that was untapped for him, and that's where he wanted it to explode. Long story short, that's the best bargaining chip, Jeremy. You go up to a player like Messi and you say, hey, we're going to give you an MLS franchise for $50 million. That's what you can work out with the owners because the MLS franchises now are going for over 400 Yeah, the problem is I don't think owners are going to want to do that twice, to tell you the truth. We'll see. Maybe maybe they could make him an offer for, let's say, I don't know, $100 million or $200 million because as you mentioned, in three, four, five years, these franchises are going to be going for half a billion dollars. I mean, LAFC is already worth a billion dollars right yeah. now. So the values of these franchises is just exploding in this moment. So we'll, we'll see. We already, we've heard that Messi has already bought a property in Miami. Everybody yeah. thinks that that destination is very likely for Lionel Messi if he comes to the MLS. But obviously, it's going to be tough. If 5.7 million U.S., by the way, if I'm not mistaken, in a large tower in Sunny Isles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He, vacation, he, he vacationed there, if it wasn't last year, it was the summer before, but he vacationed there with about 30 members of his family, by the way. Wow. And what they loved is, yes, once word got out that Lionel Messi was there, of course, there was a buzz. 
but nowhere near the buzz or the chaos that it would have been anywhere else in the world. Okay. <laughs> so they actually like the tranquility of it. And uh, that could be something that can entice them there. <laughs> I'll know, tell you the, one thing in my building. Yeah. Very close to Sunny Isles. If Lionel Messi passes by, they're not going to disturb him. They, he should be okay. Yeah. Lionel, oh, Lionel, yeah. oh. I can hear you, you help me? Can you yeah. help me walk yeah. across yeah. the street? No, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Look, but uh, uh, I would think I would think if he if he goes, it's going to be to Inter Miami. Yeah, I would yeah. think I mean, they... that's that's what it seems like. That's what it seems like. But you know what? The thing, Tony, is if C Barcelona comes in with a good offer, I think it's going to be tough. I think he's going to want to go back, and I'll think I think he'll say to himself, "I'll have time for the MLS." Uh, you know, uh, in a subsequent uh, period of time, maybe in a couple of years. But I'm telling you, MLS is going to come in aggressive. They're going to try to get him. I would They're go to the MLS, to... and I'll tell you why. Yeah. Barcelona, been there, done that. Records, been there, done that. Yeah. National team, been there, done that. World Cup, been there, done that. What's the only thing left is that, of course, hard-pressed to think anyone's going to beat him in terms of Ballon d'Or. He's probably going to win his eighth by the end of the year or whatever it is. Um, so Ronaldo's not going to catch him there. Ronaldo went to Saudi Arabia, A, to break, to make a lot of money. Yes. B, he went there to score goals. I mean, the guys had games of three and four goals. I know. And at this point, he's probably saying to himself, you know what? I'm not going to be the Ballon d'Or winner. I'm not going to be a World Cup winner. The only way I can probably justify of being myself, you know, being the best player in the world or trying to sell it on people is scoring more goals than any other player. If Lionel Messi comes to the MLS, you know how many goals he's going to score? Yeah, he'll I'll score. Play. He'll score. If they have a free kick, if they have a free kick within 25 yards, 25 yards out, okay, every game, he'll score a goal and a free kick every game because – you, you see the way they set up the wall, some of these teams? I mean, he'll have a picnic with it. He'll think it's a joke. So just there, I mean, the guy scoring on free kicks, um, I, I don't know how many goals he would score in the MLS, but I think that if he wants to surpass Cristiano Ronaldo in goals, there's the MLS, or there's also Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia or and going Asia. To the team that, the, no. Going to the, the rival team that Ronaldo's at. I, I believe... Uh, Ronaldo's at Al Nasser, and I believe the the rival team is Al Hilal, or I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, we'll we'll see. I mean, I think all of this is going to heat up once the season ends in Europe, once we get closer to the transfer winning uh, window opening up. But it's going to be certainly something very interesting to follow uh, this summer because I'm telling you, the MLS they 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 want this, and Apple wants this, and yeah. you know, your partner wants it, and they have the amount of money that Apple has, and they want to make it happen. You know they they can do they can do pretty much what they want. Who's dead last in the East? <laughs> Montreal. <laughs> yeah, that three points. I mean, we we were happy with the three points last week, but the reality is other teams are also picking up points. So Montreal is dead last right now, and um, you know they have to continue this um, this journey on the road. So they're, yes. they're going to Vancouver this weekend. It's not that they can't beat Vancouver. Trust me, I've done two. Apple TV games uh, for Vancouver. Vancouver is beatable, that's for sure. Uh, but, you know, right now you're looking at the standings and, you know, your local team is unfortunately dead last. I understand that most, te most teams have played more games in Montreal right now because yes, they've had their bye too. week. That's yeah. true. Uh, we have to mention it. But uh, it's going to be very important this weekend, Tony, to show that last week was not a fluke. You did not win only because Philadelphia had a red card. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, and that you're able to create some play in the middle of the park during the game, during the game, not only at the end, at the tail end. So it's a very important game this weekend, not only for the standings, but to start building momentum. I think we all have that doubt in our head, you know, knowing that we don't have uh, a true blue, uh, you know, number 10 on this field that you can rely on week in and week out. Um, so th this weekend, this game is, is very important for me. It's simple math. You ready? First game, did they score? No. They lost. Second yeah. game, did they score? No. They lost. Third yeah. game, did they score? No. They lost. Fourth yeah. game, did they score? Yes. Yes. Three. And they won, correct? Yeah. You need players that know how to score goals. Yeah. Well, we've always said That's that. That's what it is. You need players that know how to score goals. 
But but you need guys that can help you score goals at many different positions, as they had last year, yes. by the way. And 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 a number 10 that can score goals is also very important. It's okay to have strikers that you think can score goals, but the reality is half of those strikers or even more are on the bench. You can't play five strikers. So you need guys at other there's, positions. There's, there's something that else that you can do. You can yeah. start training some of those strikers to learn how to play the wing as well and play them on the wing because I'd rather have guys who know how to score goals also play on the wing than sit on the bench and have guys start games who run up and down, defend till death, but they can't score. Right, yeah. You uh, can do that it, too. It, yeah, well, I mean, listen, aside from Anthony Jackson, Amel, who was a striker that was produced by the academy, for the rest, it's been pretty slim. Let's see what Sean Ray is able to do. Uh, we know he has that offensive touch, but he's going to need time. That's for sure. I don't think he can just like, you know, uh, click his fingers and be one of the best number 10s in the league. It's going to take some time. I would like to see him have a big brother next to him yeah. to help him out. It's not the case at this moment. So we'll see what kind of lineup they have against Vancouver uh, this weekend. But, uh, you know, it's an opponent that you can beat. And you try. You have to go there with the mentality of wanting to win on the road. Yeah. You brought up a name, Anthony Jackson ML. Last player, last striker out of the academy to make the jump? Yes. To the first team. Because, of course, you have Wubbins Passius who plays in the CPL. You have uh, Mamadou Kane who plays in the CPL. You have Abdul Binat who plays in the CPL. And uh, that's it. Any more? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, Vilsain was not part of uh, the academy. Kone was not part of the academy. Kone's so not a striker. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, but he's a, he's, yeah. he's an offensive-minded player that can play in the midfield that can help you offensively, so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He actually had some good moments uh, in amateur soccer playing wing. I still think he could be a winger, by the way. We saw him play wing a couple of times. I still think that he could he could play wing. He's a versatile player. He can play wing, and he can play eighth, and I think he can play different positions, either wing, too, and stuff like that. All right, speaking of scoring goals, yeah, uh, you're going to love this discussion because Kai Kamara – scored for the Chicago Fire in stoppage time to give the yes. Fire the win last weekend. So listen, it's his, uh, it's the second time he contributes on a late goal for Chicago to help them get a result. They, he did it the first game he played for Chicago yes. where he set up the goal, and now he scores the goal in extra time. So, you know, um, you know, we talk about players' age and stuff like that. For me, honestly, Tony... You know, you have guys that reach in every different sport that early 30s and they're done, you know. Uh, and then you got guys that that are just not normal. They're abnormal. They reach ages where they're close to 40, they're 40, they're over 40, and they're still performing. And as I mentioned, and I can, I can name players in many different sports that this is the case. So for me, age is a number. Of course, you don't want to sign a player long term when he's 40 years old and over that's only normal but the reality is you may be 40 years old and you may still have that touch where you're able to put the ball at the back of the net at the right moment and help your team a lot so for me it's uh, uh you know uh, we're watching him produce right now in chicago he's chasing the all-time mls record for goals scored that's great uh visibility yeah. for the chicago fire right now the vis visibility that Montreal was getting last year, uh, and, and you're you're simply not going to get that that kind of visibility because he's yeah. he's one of a kind. He's a unique kind of a player. He has a unique talent which a lot of players don't have. Jeremy, like I told you before, and I told you this off the air before, and I'm going to tell you now again on the air. I understood everything you were saying with Kai Kamara. Really, I did. I mean, I see it. I know he plays. He scores. Uh, it's important. I didn't like that he wasn't saying the truth. That's the only thing that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. He was yeah. negotiating in the media, yeah. through the media. He was negotiating through social media. Pardon me. That's what he was doing. And, uh, you know, like, uh, I need to get a raise because uh, I want to move my family here and we need to buy a house. Yeah. And you by the way, you've been playing professional soccer for 18 years. Yeah. You made about 8 million U.S. Uh, you know, I would I would think there's there's yeah. money there. Listen, to, to, uh, to to pay for a 2,000 square foot condo in Austria, like yeah. I'm isn't it? I would and, think. And by, by the way, at this moment, uh, I haven't seen a press release from Chicago saying that they've restructured his contract. So I don't know if they have and they haven't yeah. announced it. No. But I, yeah. I, from what I know, he's making the same salary he was making here. Unless, you know, they're, 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 they're going to announce something soon. I don't know. 
I think there's blame to be taken on both sides, but this should have never happened. It should never have ended this way. And to see him on the other side, scoring those goals, helping Chicago win, uh, you know, it, it's got to rub Montreal fans the wrong way. He should have just said, yeah, and it rubbed the fans the wrong way, but it rubbed the fans the wrong way too because they knew that he was negotiating through the media and through social media. All he had to say was, I love this city and I love this team and I want to be here for another couple of years. I want to retire here. I want to break the goal scoring record in the league and I want to do it here and I want to do it in Montreal. Take a look at the team's salary. With all due respect to everyone, I think if you compare, I think me asking for a bump is, is yeah. only normal. It's that's only it. normal. And and I think the team knew that's that it. also. They knew. The team knew. And that's why they made him a new offer. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, I don't know what Kai Kamara asked for. I don't know exactly what the team. I think they offered him three hundred thousand or something like that for one year, uh, for two years, and or or and three fifty for two years, whatever it is. They should have been able to cut it in half, find a mid, you know, find a a common ground and move on. Um, they didn't do that, and now listen, we'll cross our fingers and hope that some of the other guys, uh, like um, uh, Vilse, um, can can pick up some of the slack. We'll see. O four. Um, but at this moment, they remain young players that still need to prove that they can score in this league while Kai Kamara keeps scoring goals. And he will keep scoring goals because he's ultra-motivated to, to get to the top of this uh, to this of this of record and break it. Yeah, I saw this on social media yesterday. In the meantime, it would be nice to put Vilsane's picture up on the team website. Like, he's if been here for This is a problem, Tony. You know what? I got to say. Like somebody put that up on social media yesterday. They're looking for, I think even Ofer wasn't there, but I mean, uh, he was missing. It was probably a bug, but Ville Saint's picture is not there, not even the uniform. I mean, uh, he didn't arrive last a, week. A, a few weeks back, I was doing a Vancouver game and there was a player yeah. on the bench and yeah. I'm looking in the roster and he's not on the roster. You know what I'm saying? I mean, listen, these are things that need to be improved. It's, it's when you, if you're going to be a top league in the world, uh, people need to be able to find players easily on the website. And, yeah. you know, like uh, on IMFC Radio, if a, if a player signs a contract with CF Montreal, within five minutes, our chart is upgraded. With the player's name, player's position, player's salary, player contract length, it's there in five minutes. There's no excuses. We're in 2023, Tony. Things get done quickly nowadays. So it, it, it's got to be done. Otherwise, it doesn't look good. I agree. No, no, I, I hear you. And uh, yeah, look, uh, nobody's perfect. People make mistakes. All right. Uh, some bigger than others. All right. Okay. Um, coming up, you know what? We're going to touch on their two games coming up. Okay. But the fact that they're going to be on synthetic grass, and we'll touch on that next podcast, that's, that's good news for them. Because obviously, they're used to it. They've been playing at an Olympic stadium. Yeah, and now I'm guessing that they'll be switching to neutral A sometime soon, at least on the turf there. So they'll be able to train on the turf uh, outside. Uh, we'll see what that gives. I mean, it's still not very warm in Montreal to train outside. And we know that at neutral A, it's always colder than it is everywhere else in Montreal because they're uh, right near the water. Uh, it'll be at least another couple of weeks until they can train on natural grass at neutral A. We'll see what happens then. But uh, we'll pick up on all of this uh, during the next podcast, and uh, we'll look more closely on uh, what's been done uh, against Vancouver. You can check us out on YouTube. Subscribe. It's absolutely free. The Sick Podcast, CF Montreal Talk. I'm Marinero. He's Filosa. Ciao for now. Take care. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow The Sick Podcast, CF Montreal Talk on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. 